feel this way forever what is going on guys welcome to round two of the 2016 season two f1 career mode um in this career mode i am still doing season two i'm still with red bull if you haven't seen the last video and a special uh announcement i am using my f1 thrustmaster wheel so season one i did start off with the thrustmaster wheel in the first episode back in Australia but then it just got a bit too hard and too complicated because the pedals weren't exactly perfect um, and so as you'll see in this practice shot I'll go on the pedals and it'll just lock up so we might have it here there you go so you saw the front right just lock up and I'm putting hardly any force in the pedals so it was a bit uneasy for lap times so but I am doing uh, wheel pedals all that I'm doing the wheel for the remainder of this season most likely uh, so lap times won't be that great the racing hopefully is better and hopefully I can have more control but as you can see Harry Anto set a 136 on softs and us on mediums we're setting a 141 so we're well off the pace but that is going to be practice uh, we're going to finish 22nd and we're going to go straight into qualifying So here we are for qualifying for Q1. Um, just a reminder, we are doing three, the full qualifying, so that means we're doing Q1, Q2, Q3. If we make it in into each qualifying, we get to do the second one, and then, yeah, you, you might understand that. Uh, but here we are in Q1 for our first, and I believe our final flying lap. So this is going to be our only flying lap in Q1. Uh, Gutierrez sets a 134.5. We're going to come across the line and set a 134.8, it looks like. Uh, my little preview screen on Sony Vegas isn't exactly exactly huge. But now on Q2, uh, we're coming on to our final flying lap. We're going a bit wide. We're still 1.4 seconds up. We're down to 1.3. It's going to go down to possibly 1.2. There we go, 1.2 at the end of the line and to 134 point something. I cannot exactly see. I think it's a 134.8. So I think we did go faster in Q1. Um, but... I think that's going to be it and there we go we unfortunately did not make it through to q3 and that's going to be 14th on the grid there's something in the bahrain air tonight and i'm not just talking about the sand our brightest minds have thrust their brightest ideas into the spotlight of the Sakia circuit this evening as we look ahead once more to a grand prix that has thrilled us so consistently in the past Formula One returns to the desert today on this exceptional 3.36 mile circuit. 15 corners provide plenty of overtaking opportunities and two DRS zones will help with that as well. It could be a strategic race this one with Sakir notorious for eating up the rear tyres. Watch out for drivers managing their rubber at some point during the Grand Prix. Joining me to talk you through the action today is Anthony Davidson. And give us an idea of what kind of thing you're going to be looking out for today. Well, the big question for me is whether or not we're going to see the cars able to follow each other closely enough to overtake, especially through the fast sections here. Of course, we've got DRS and that will help on the straight, but it's still no good if you're coming off the previous corner too slowly or too far behind. We need to be doing better than this. Let's push hard. So here we are for the race. Um, as always, I am going to put in a few kilos of fuel, maybe one, one, one and a half kilos extra fuel in the car, simply to have more fuel at the end of the race. We are putting, as you can see, more fuel in the car. Um, starting 14th, I had, I have high expectations for this race. We're going to go straight through formation lap right now, but we're going to go straight to the end. Uh, I am hoping for at least a top eight finish. Uh, that's what I'm aiming for this race. It's achievable but we definitely need to get the points um, after a somewhat very strange race last time. But I'm not sure what to expect now, but here we are on the end of the formation lap, coming across into our grid position very slowly. The cars are starting to form up, and we're going to get straight into the race once the cars start to form up. So here we are for the race. we got... Three lights now, four lights, five lights, 
lights out and away we go. And that was the longest wait ever. We're going to go around the outside. Uh, Grosjean blocks us off. So we're going to go down the inside past Kvyat. Science there. And I believe that is Jolie and Palmer down our left. But then we get tangled. And the Toro Rosso actually hit us. We got we made contact with the Toro Rosso. We got on a legal overtake of five positions. But now the safety car is out. So all those posi positions are going to make no difference. And we're going to go straight into a replay once we get back on the track. We are up into 10th place right behind Alonso. So we're going to go and have a look at a replay now from the third person person perspective if i can even english today but here you go we got an all right launch well the front runners do we get an almighty launch uh as you can see we are down beside the torosa and then all of a sudden we're just sideways and we take three car or well, two other cars with us and then that's looks like a mercedes may contact with the torosa we're gonna go right right on board for this replay look we get an all right start uh grosjean in front of us gets an all right start and then we just yeah, we, I didn't expect the Toro Rosso to still be there, and then we just make contact. I'm going to put it down to a racing incident. We're going to look on the Toro Rosso's uh, perspective, and the Toro Rosso just... I don't have no idea what happened there. Alonso launches ahead of the Toro Rosso. His teammate launches. Three cars, four cars launch ahead of the Toro Rosso, and then, yeah, it's very hard to understand what happened. And now we're going to watch it from Nico Rosberg's perspective as he gets a very decent launch. Not the greatest. Lewis Hamilton got a much better launch. As you can see, my teammate Dan Ricciardo down the right of the Mercedes into the corner. Uh, yeah, you're just going to have a look. And there we go. And that's how Rosberg actually got the lead of the race. It was all because of that incident and Lewis Hamilton was tangled. But here we are on lap four now. We actually skipped the whole safety car. Nothing much Nothing much happened during that uh, phase. No one went into the pits. And we're back on the end of the safety car. So the safety car will be coming in at the end of this lap. We are just keeping the tyres warm. And now I have to stay close to Hulkenberg. Get an alright launch. Because since we're down in P9 now. So I think a car did go in the pits. So Oh no, we did lose a position. Uh, since we're down into P9. Basically... The launch isn't going to be great. We need to stay right behind Hulkenberg. And there we go. And no one seems to be going into the pits at the end of this lap. We're just sticking behind Hulkenberg. We decided to go back in the slipstream to see if it made a difference. Alonso is just a sitting duck. Hulkenberg backs out. Going down the inside on both of them. Uh, Alonso has the line. Has the corner. And Alonso stays ahead. But we do get past uh, Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg is still there. And he nudges us away. Uh, our engineer decided to come in and tell me to change strategy or there's a new strategy in the corner so I had to wait and just wait after the corner to acknowledge him but we do decide to stay with our previous pit stop strategy was which is to come in on the end of lap eight um, so we're still behind Hulkenberg we do manage to slide the car thankfully we didn't lose any positions however we did lose time to Hulkenberg and now Gutierrez is right behind us um, we are hoping that Hulkenberg will slow down because Al Alonso is in front of him, and that is Raikkonen in front of Alonso. So Alonso is up into a beastly position, seventh place. That is amazing for a McLaren Honda, uh, but it's only to serve the race, and anything can happen. But we're still riding on board. Hulkenberg is not getting away exactly. We are just keeping up with him. I think Hulkenberg might have worse tires. He did start in front of us I believe so Hulkenberg is on the super softs as I can it looks like super softs from here um, so our tires should be much much fresher than Hulkenberg's Hulkenberg will have the grip advantage but with fresher tires comes better grip and now there's a slow train it looks like Grosjean is holding up this train and I believe Alonso will dive into the pits no Hulkenberg dives into the pits with Raikkonen in front of him and so now it's just me and Alonso Alonso is starting to look uh, looking to have a go on Grosjean. Now on lap 7, Alonso still behind Grosjean. Nothing did happen, um, but we are very close to Alonso now. And I'm sorry if that transition made it look like it was the same lap, but it was completely... Uh, the, it was the next lap. Nothing happened. But we are very close to Alonso. We're going to have a look and dive bomb on Alonso, and we get the job done. He's still there. We're just going to have to push him a little bit to make him back off, and we get the job done on Alonso. Now Grosjean ahead of us in P2. And Grosjean going very slow through that corner, so we had to brake check almost. Um, and a little bit of a lockup. It is going to be very hard. These cars in front of us are going to be coming into the lap, uh, into the pits very soon, and we will be coming in 
uh, just after them. We decided to back out because Grosjean was going to just stick it there. And so now we have DRS on Grosjean and it's going to be the easiest pass because once you have DRS, it's just an OP weapon. And there you go, down the inside of Grosjean. Grosjean was still there. We decided to break a bit early. I didn't want to lock up and make a huge mess. Now on lap eight, I believe we come into the pits at the end of this lap. Yes, we are. We're coming into the pits and Alonso will be following us. I got to get the speed down to 80 and we get the job done. Alonso is right behind us and we're just going to see how many cars. And there's a huge, huge gap. It looks after maybe eighth place is a huge gap or maybe actually further back. But there we go, we have a few cars coming into the pits, Alonso gets held up by us, and there we have it, a 2.4 second pit stop was good, it's not the best we've had, but it's definitely good for this track, uh, we are coming out on the super softs, Hockenberg in front of us on the softs, so definitely a mixed strategy on the grid, uh, Hockenberg softs will be lasting longer, but we're going to have better grip to catch up to him. Now on lap 9, we have a few cars in the pits as we are slowly catching up to Hulkenberg. Palmer in the pits, and I'm not sure who else was in the pits, but now we have Hulkenberg into the first corner. He's taking his time, and Alonso is still behind us at this stage. Lap 11 now, the start of it, and we have another car in the pits. I believe that was Hamilton in the pits. Very late pit stop, or he pitted straight away because of front wing damage when he collided with the Toro Rosso. So, Hamilton's race is effectively over. It's definitely going to be damaging for him uh, when you have to pit that early and still pit again. So he had to do a two-stop. He was forced into it, essentially. Now, on lap 12, we're looking down the inside on Hockenberg. We get an almighty launch because of DRS. And there we go. Hockenberg is still there. And there's there we go. We finally get Hockenberg behind us. And that is pretty much a replica of what happened before. We had Hockenberg on our side when we just needed him behind us. Lap 14 now, nothing happened on lap 13, unfortunately. So we're going to stay on board for lap 14. Hulkenberg is very, very close, and Alonso is right behind him. So I'm not sure what happened, but Alonso's pace, the McLaren's pace around this track has been amazing. It's either McLaren did some upgrades, or this wheel is definitely slowing me down as we get an Xbox notification. Um, there we have it, Massa in front of us, I believe he's about 13, no he's about 6 seconds ahead of us, so it's still possible to catch up to him, but we are on the final lap, so to make up 6 seconds, he needs to make a huge mistake, and that's not what we want, we don't want to go wide into that corner, so Hulkenberg was going, will be having a better exit, and much, much better traction, and there we go, a lock up, not a huge, huge uh, drama for that lock up, because it did save us going into that corner, but it's something we don't want to do, especially on this track, where it's easy to lock up and go wide. But here we are, Hulkenberg is still behind. The wheels on my car, they're starting to lose traction into this corner and the previous corner. Um, when the when I first put on the Super Softs, we could do 7th gear in that corner, but now we had to do 6. But there we go, at the end of the race, Nico Rosberg is our race winner. Massa made up 6 seconds, or maybe he's 13 seconds behind, I'm not sure. But there we have it. Massa will be finishing fifth and will be coming across the line in sixth place. An almighty, almighty finish since we sailed a 14th and we did have a safety car incident. So sixth place is fantastic for us. And I believe Daniel Ricciardo finished second or third. So that's going to be amazing for Red Bull. Brilliant stuff from Mercedes today. That's another historic win. And I have to wonder, Anthony Davidson, just what set them apart from the competition here? Well, the safety car completely changed the race, didn't it? It's hard to say exactly what would have happened without it, but there's no question that they came out of that situation in a good position. And here are our podium drivers... So here we have it. Nico Rosberg wins the race. Daniel Ricciardo finishes second, and Valtteri Bottas finishes third. Um, I would have thought a Ferrari was going to finish third. I have no idea where Valtteri Bottas came from to finish third. That Williams must have been doing something amazing, and Ferrari must have had a huge, huge problem to not finish in the point or in the on the podium. But at least we have one Red Bull driver on the podium, and that's going to be amazing for our points, especially when Lewis Hamilton did not finish in the points, I believe. Um, so here we have it. There's the race results. Lewis Hamilton finished tenth, so he did get one point, but he's down. He started first and he's gone down to 10th so that's a huge drop in the driver standings we are down to six 
Felipe Massa stays first. And the top 10, look at that, the top 12, or around the top 10, are within one race difference. In the constructor standings, we are third, or we go up to third. Williams is still first, and Mercedes AMG Petronas second. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy this race. F1 2016 crew mode part three should be out fairly soon, and F1 2010 Monaco Grand Prix will be out soon. If you did enjoy this, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.